Good morning, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Pain. And welcome to Let's Learn C. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to any specific sections. Make sure to have annotations turned on so you can see the updates I make to this video. Today I'll be using Visual Studio Community Edition, which you can download from visualstudio.com. However, you can follow along with whatever IDE or program you'd like. Today's focus will be on additional library support, which is a Boost and GSL install and setup, which builds slightly on previous lessons. So feel free to check out those if you're unfamiliar with a topic we cover. All right, additional library setup. What is an additional library? That would be if we knock out a few Starbucks off a single block and pave them out for an old library. Libraries are large buildings where we would store information in a physical format. These were popular, wait, wait a minute. No, they were, they were never popular. But we, but that was before we had the mind-blowingness that is the internet hole, which we've all come to know and love, and you're probably watching this on. All right, enough goofing around. So have you ever been told to use something like owner, not null, optional, timer, or any keyword or function, or even a library, which you just couldn't use, even though you were told that it was included in C++? Could be teachers or tutorials online telling you to use the stuff which you can't seem to access for some reason. Have you scoured the web trying to look for the newest version or standard of C++? To get those, I'm about to make all of your worries go away. I will be covering how to create your own libraries in a much later tutorial. Connecting other CPP files, header files, and libraries to your project is how you're going to access those keywords and functions that will take your project to the next level. I'm going to show you how to add and connect two libraries in particular. Boost and GSL. The C++ library you can download from boost.org provides you with a free portable collection of C++ source libraries so you can take them wherever you go. Well, sort of. The term portable here is to say that everything you need, header files, CPP files, and more are all packaged together in one directory or folder. It includes some standard libraries as well as many non-standard libraries like optional and timer, which we will be using in later tutorials. Boost built on the already existing standard library built into C++ and expands upon it. You can download it from this site right here, which is boost.org. That's www.boost.org. And if for some reason this link is no longer valid, you can always just Google search boost C++ and you should be able to find it. You can go ahead and download it now and I will show you how to install it in just a few minutes. The other library we'll be using is GSL, which stands for Guideline Support Library. This is a library highly recommended for use by the C++ core guidelines. So it's a support library for the C++ core guidelines. So Guideline Support Library is a pretty good name. I have been teaching you many of the C++ core guidelines throughout these tutorials, so as we move forward, I will be using the library quite a bit. GSL contains a handful of powerful tools for you, including not null, owner, unique pointer, and shared pointer. Again, we will definitely be using these in later tutorials. You can download the GSL library from github.com slash Microsoft slash GSL. It's right here. And if you cruise over to the right hand side, you can close or download it by clicking on the green button right here. And it'll download a zip file for you. Okay, so now that you've downloaded both of these sets of zip files right here and here, Boost and the GSL Master, let's get into the actual placement of these files. So once you go ahead and unzip each of these files, and you could do that if you're having trouble unzipping it, like for some reason Windows can't unzip it or whatever program or OS you're using can't unzip this, uh, you can download 7-zip or WinZip. Uh, those are the two primary zipping programs I use to zip and unzip files. So you'll unzip them into their master folders right here. And then what you're gonna do is I'd recommend creating a CPP underscore libs file in your program files directory. Or if you're on Mac or Linux, then it could be under your applications folder. This is because the files that we're gonna be using in these libraries are for building programs, and we're not actually going to be changing them ever. So they belong in the program's files, or application files. 
Once we have placed these files in the proper folder, then in Visual Studio or your IDE of choice, we're going to link this path to our program so that it can access these libraries. If you're not using, using Visual Studio, a simple Google search of adding C++ libraries plus your IDE's name or your program's name should give you the answer you're looking for. And if you have a good solution, please post it down in the comments below so that others can see. One important note is this linking of files is on a per project basis. It is not permanent, unfortunately. There's no way of binding it in Visual Studio to always point to those, li those C++ libraries permanently. It's only on a per project basis. All right, so you can open the project you wish to connect these libraries to or follow along with me as I create a new project. So I'm gonna click new project here and I'm going to go ahead and put this under my programming CPP folder and we're just gonna call this uh, library test. So now we've created our new project and I'm gonna go ahead and press Control Shift A to add a file. And we're just gonna call this main. And here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to do is paste in some code. Now this code is not gonna make much sense, but it will in just a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste in some code. And notice immediately, we're gonna start getting underlines for compiler errors. It's saying, hey, there is no GSL library to include, and there is no boost library to include, and as a result, this code down below won't actually work. So what's going on? Well, let's go ahead and open our Solutions Explorer. And here on the right-hand side, we're going to right-click on Library Test, and then down here, you're gonna click on Properties. And here is where we are going to connect up our libraries that we've downloaded from the web and up to our project. So you click on C slash C++, and then the very first option says, additional include directories. And this is where we're gonna paste our paths. We can twirl down to edit, and it creates a nice little pop-up for us right here. And here's where we can actually paste some paths. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste the paths for these two sets of files that we downloaded. First is going to be the C++ boost library right here. Next, I'm going to paste the GSL libraries. And unfortunately, since I'm copying this from OpenOffice, it's trying to add in extra number of characters. And so that's good too. And all I did was add include onto the file path for the GSL library so that it connects up to the headers properly, okay? And we'll click okay to say that we're done. And notice that it's now edited this side. So we click apply and notice that the two underscores up above have disappeared. In fact, all of the underscore error displays have disappeared completely. So now our program is compiling correctly. So if I just go ahead and put a stopper marker right here, and try to run the program, it'll work just fine. Everything's compiling and we get a pop-up error or a, <laughs> we get a pop-up box and we're good. So then we just go ahead and continue the program and it closes out successfully. Perfect. So what's going on in this code? Let's comb through it line by line. So first we have the standard include IO stream, which we always include. Then we have include gsl.h and this is so we can access uh, owner. So owner is the only guy that we're gonna actually be using right here. And then we create an instance of it by accessing the GSL namespace and passing in the int star to tell what type it is. And yeah, we'll go more into what this is doing in a later tutorial. And again, here's a test for optional. It's in the boost namespace and uh, yeah, it all works great. So that is it. We've successfully connected up these libraries to our project. Thanks so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Please leave me a comment below if this helps you at all. And also check out the comments if you're having any problems. Lastly, please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Hit that like button to show some love or support me and the show on Patreon by clicking in the top right corner, that little eye in a circle, just click in there. Yeah, it's patreon.com slash Thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive.